Hello students, welcome to the next lecture in matrix algebra. In this video lecture, I will be discussing a very special kind of matrix which is known as van der Mond matrix. Why this is special? Because the determinant in this case comes out to be in a very special form. So let us understand what is the matrix which is known as the van der Mond matrix. So any matrix which is of this form. So clearly observe the first row is nothing but 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? Now if you move to the second row, so the entries are x1, x2, so on to xn. And the third one will be x1 square, x2 square and so on to xn square. And if you go on the nth row, it will be x1 raised to power n minus 1 and so on. You can easily observe also. So if you are on the second row, so the power is 2 minus 1. If you are on the third row, so 2 can be written as 3 minus 1. Similarly, if you are on the nth row, so the elements will have the power as n minus 1. Correct? Now, important. What is the theorem? The theorem says if you want to calculate the determinant of this matrix, which is of order n cross n, so it is nothing but pi. Pi is nothing but the product, right? Product of xi minus xj when i is strictly less than j and they are varying from 1 to n. Fine with this. Now let us try to prove the result for this. Using the principle of mathematical induction, for n equals to 2, you can easily see if I replace my x1 with y, x and x2 with y. So what is the determinant of a 2 cross 2 matrix? So you can see 1 into y, right? Minus 1 into x. So this is y minus x. And if you want to write it in this form, so it can be written as minus common x minus y. For n equals to 3, the entries are 1, 1, 1, x, y, z, x square, y square, z square. So now just apply the column operations. Why do I apply the column operations for determinant? Because we know the property of determinant that if you apply any elementary operations, the value of determinant remains unchanged. So if you apply this operation, that is column 2 transforms to column 2 minus column 1 and column 3 transforms to column 3 minus column 1, we get the desired matrix. So now in order to calculate the determinant, we will expand it along the row 1. So just see. If you expand it along row 1, so this will be 1 into the determinant of this 2 cross 2 matrix. Now again also you can take y minus x from the first column common and z minus x from the second column and use the property of a square minus b square which is a plus b into a minus b. So you, here you will be left with y plus x and here you will be left with z plus x, right? And the determinant of this matrix comes out to be z plus x minus y minus x. So x and x get cancelled out. And now if you want to write it into the form as I have described in the theorem, so it can be written as if you take minus common, so x minus y into x minus z into y minus z. Now, in the next step of induction, I will assume that this results hold true for r equals to n, right? So this result hold for n cross n. So what I wish to prove is, I wish to prove, now we wish to prove the result to be true. for n plus 1. Fine with this. So whenever my r is equal to n plus 1. So what will be the order of matrix in that case? So order of the matrix will be n plus 1 cross n plus 1. Right? So the first row will be 1, 1 and so on. So nth time and n plus 1th time. So the next row will be x1, x2, so on to xn and xn plus 1. And similarly, if you go on writing the other one, so this will be x1 square, x2 square and so on to xn square and xn plus 1 square. Fine with this. And the last row will be, so let me begin with second last. So this will be x1 raised to power n minus 1. So x2 raised to power n minus 1 and so on to xn minus 1 raised to power n minus 1 and xn plus 1 raised to power n minus 1. And the last Last row will be x1 raised to power n, x2 raised to power n and so on to xn minus 1 raised to power n and the last one will be xn plus 1 raised to power n. So this is my n plus 1 cross n plus 1 matrix. So that is the order of the matrix. Now we want to calculate the determinant, right? So clearly if I apply operation that is if my rn plus 1, so that is the last row transforms to the last row minus x1 times the previous row. Fine with this. So just observe what are the entries corresponding to this. So what will be the entries? So let me write it again. 
so my last row so x1 so first entry here right so it will be x1 raised to power n minus x1 times the previous entry which is x1 raised to power n minus 1 so this will be x1 raised to power n minus x1 into x1 raised to power n minus 1 so this is nothing but x1 raised to power n so minus x1 raised to power n so this is 0 so the first entry comes out to be 0 here right now what about second entry so let me erase it again so the second entry will be so x2 raised to power n so this will be x2 raised to power n minus x1 times x2 raised to power n minus 1 fine with this now if you take x2 raised to power n minus 1 common so what are you left with is x2 minus x1 fine with this good enough so you can write down that this will be x2 raised to power n minus 1 into x2 minus x1 fine with this and similarly if you continue doing the same you can easily check that this entry will come out to be x n minus 1 raised to power n minus 1 into x n minus 1 minus x1 and the last one will be x n plus 1 raised to power n plus 1 into x n plus 1 minus x1 so these are the entries which are which will be correspond to the last row fine with this and now you know what you will do is now apply the operation on the nth row right so this will be rn transforms to rn minus x1 times rn minus 1 so in this case also my first entry will become 0 now let us check what will be the second entry so let us see what will be my second entry so that will be x2 raised to power n minus 1 minus x1 times so the previous entry will be x2 raised to power n minus 2 so that here the entry will be x2 raised to power n minus 2 so just see here what i will get so if it can be written as x2 if you take n minus 2 common so here it will be x2 minus x1 so here i will write it down as x2 raised to power n minus 2 into x2 minus x1 now observing the pattern so if i go on applying the same operation on the previous row so let me write what are the operations which i will be applying so by subtracting by subtracting xi times so x1 times the ith row to the i plus 1th row to the i plus 1th row what do we get we get the matrix which is of this form so what is the form so the first row will be 1 1 1 and so on to 1 and all other entries here will be 0 0 0 right with this and the second entry here it will be x2 minus x1 right so here the entry will be xn minus x1 and similarly the last entry here it will be xn plus 1 minus x1 now the next step will be if you expand along column 1 so if you expand along column 1 all other entries are 0 so only one factor is present here and if you take the determinant of the leftover matrix and then you will apply one thing that you can see from the second column x2 minus x1 is common from each and every entry right and so similarly on. from the xnth row xn minus x1 will be common so you can take xn minus x1 common right so and similarly from the last column you can take xn plus 1 minus x1 common so now i will be writing all these entries in the product form fine with this so can i write it down product from j running from 2 to n plus 1 right x j minus x 1 so clearly x2 minus x1 into x3 minus x1 and so on to xn plus 1 minus x1 and the determinant of the leftover matrix so what is the leftover matrix so just expand right so on expanding if you have taken x2 minus x1 common so here it will be 1 fine with this and you can just see what will be the end next entry after this so what will be the next entry after this so just observe the pattern so here it will be x2 raised to power 1 into x2 minus x1 so 1 and below 1 what you will get x2 then what you will get x2 square and so on to the last entry will be x2 raised to power n minus 1 and similarly follow the same pattern here it will be 1 1 up to last will be 1 so this will be x3 up till so on to xn plus 1 right and then this will be x3 square and so on to xn plus 1 square and the last row would be x3 raised to power n minus 1 and so on to xn plus 1 
raised to power n minus 1. Now what I will be doing, I will be applying the induction hypothesis. Applying induction hypothesis. What was my induction hypothesis? I have assumed the result to be true for any n cross n matrix. Right. So can I write it down like that pi running from 2. So product of the entries that is pi varying from 2 to n plus 1 right xj minus x1 fine with this and from induction hypothesis what is this value this value is nothing but pi right varying from yes 2 less than equal to i strictly less than j less than or equal to n fine with this so here it will be n plus 1 to be more precise right and into xj minus x i so you can see that was my induction hypothesis on combining both of them so this will be pi varying from so the inequality will be i strictly less than j which is less than or equal to n plus 1 and i is varying from 1 right and product of xi minus xj so that is the result that is how we have proved using the induction hypothesis that my result holds true so that is the speciality you can say of this determinant right because it gives me a very beautiful result and it is famous and you know it can be useful in many of the cases so i hope the proof of this theorem is clear to you for more such videos do subscribe to my youtube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon thank you